Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this quick video, I'm going to go over 12 common issues that you might encounter while setting up your video transmitter. The first issue that you might encounter is using the incorrect VTX protocol when setting up the video transmitter on Betaflight. Currently there are two available VTX protocols, RC Trump and TBS Smart Audio. Using these protocols is going to enable you to set up the frequency and the output strength of the VTX using Betaflight, which is much more convenient than using a button. So when you set up a new VTX on Betaflight, first go over its specs and find out which protocol is supported. The next issue that you might encounter is a broken antenna connector. So in case you are having signal issues, make sure that the antenna and its connectors are not damaged. This issue leads us to the next one. You have to make sure that the polarization of the antennas of the video transmitter and the video receiver is identical. The next issue might sound trivial, but still is very common. You have to make sure that both video transmitter and video receiver are set to the same frequency. In addition, when powering up your video transmitter, make sure that you are using the correct voltage. So for example, you will need to power up this video transmitter with at least 7 volts, so don't use 5 volts. And when powering up this one, you have to make sure that you are using 5 volts, as otherwise you are going to damage it. The next issue is getting only the on-screen display on your video feed. And this issue is not related to the VTX and happens because the camera is not properly connected or powered up using the correct voltage. The next issue is a faulty OSD chip. So after making sure that everything is wired and powered up properly, I recommend to connect the camera directly to the VTX, power it up and see if it's working. If it's working, it indicates that the issue is not with the camera or the VTX and the problem is in the flight controller. You should note however that as I mentioned before, which is also the next issue, you have to make sure that everything is wired up properly, so the video in is connected to the camera and the video out to the VTX, and in case you are still facing issues, I recommend to carefully use a multimeter and see that everything is powered up properly using the correct voltage. The next issue is related to Betaflight. In case you would like to configure the VTX using Betaflight and you are using Betaflight 4.0 and above, in addition to selecting the correct VTX protocol next to the URAT port which is connected to the VTX, you will also need to configure the VTX table which can be found under the video transmitter tab on Betaflight. The easiest option to configure it is by obtaining a JSON file from the manufacturer of the VTX, then you can simply load it and all the settings are going to be pre-configured. Then under selected mode you will be able to select the band, channel, the output power, Set the VTX to pit mode, which means that the output strength is going to be extremely low. Set the pit mode frequency. And you can also set the low power disarm to off, which is the default option, on, and then only when the quadcopter is going to be armed, it is going to be set to the power option that you're going to select. And otherwise, when it is disarmed, it is going to be set to the lowest output power which is available. And when the low power disarm is going to be set to on until first arm, until the first time that you are going to arm your quadcopter, the VTX is going to be set to the lowest output power and after you are going to arm the quadcopter for the first time it is going to be set to your selected output power option. Finally, after making your changes, don't forget to save your settings. The last three issues are pretty simple. First, you have to make sure that the smart audio or the RX pad on the VTX is soldered to a TX pad on the flight controller and not to an RX pad, which is a common mistake. In addition, in case your video range is extremely low, make sure that the VTX is not set to pit mode and exit the pit mode if needed. And finally, some VTXs come locked out of the factory, so you'll need to unlock them according to the manufacturer instructions in order to set the VTX to all the available output power and frequency options. So that's going to be it for my quick VTX troubleshoot, and of course, if you are facing any issue that I haven't covered, please let me know in the comment section down below, and I will do my best to help you out. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful, and I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.